I'm praying, I'm praying, and I want you to pray too, that two weeks from today, we'll be able to go in at least half capacity. That's what they're, they're doing in other states. And uh, two weeks from yesterday, two weeks from this past Friday, we're supposed to move into phase two. Unless a bunch of politicians or somebody pushes those number cases up a whole bunch. So we can't. And I hope that don't happen. You'd hate to think somebody would do that, but it wouldn't, wouldn't put it past them. I don't understand why we have the same amount of cases as Tennessee and twice the deaths. Uh, that's interesting. Interesting. Check it out. But anyway, uh, I, ain't, I ain't on no kick on that this evening. I want to preach, so let's open the Bible to Acts chapter 20. And, and we are praying that two weeks from today, maybe we'll be able to go in, uh, come in at half capacity. That would put us in much better shape than, than what we are in now. Uh, you, you can see 500 people in here, and uh, we, so we've been, that would hopefully put us in great shape except for the, for the bus kids, and maybe, maybe it'll work out that we can get them real soon also. Uh, Acts chapter 20, Acts chapter number 20 tonight, and I want to read you a, a, a statement that the great apostle Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles, he wrote, uh, got the revelation of the mystery of the body of Christ, Paul did, revealed to him, and he said in Acts chapter 20, look at verse number 24. He's talking about all the things that happened to him in verse number 21. And he said in uh, 21, he testified to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 22, he said, I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing what's going to happen to me. The Lord will to kill me when I get there. Save that the Holy Ghost witness. Verse 23, everywhere I go, he said, bonds and afflictions abide me. Now, verse 24, here's what I want to look at tonight. But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. I like that where he said, all at trouble, verse 1, 21, 22, 23, None of that stuff, he said, moves me. It don't move me. And he said, uh, I don't count my life dear to myself. And so I want to preach tonight on the subject, the man that nothing could move. The man that nothing could move. Paul said, they stoned me. They throwed me in jail. They beat me with rocks. They slapped me in prison. They wore out my back. They've talked about me. They've said everything in the world about me, but none of these things move me. Now, you know, when we was growing up, and still do once in a while, we used to sing a little song, and it says, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. It's just like a tree planted by the water. Now, what that means is I'm going to take my stand, and I'm going to plant my feet, what I believe is right, and I'm going to stand here, and I'm not going to let everything that comes along move me. Paul said tonight, he, he said, none of these things move me. He was not wishy-washy, brother. Uh, he, he, was, uh, he went through every conceivable trial and trouble and burden you can imagine. And uh, he, was, he, was not, he was not a hippie, hop, hop, trendy kind of a preacher that dressed and acted like and went to the, uh, the worldly clubs and hobnob with celebrities to get their money and, and, uh, and fooled around and compromised in order to have a big crowd. Paul was just an old-fashioned gospel preacher that wound up in jail, wound up getting his head cut off. This world never did accept him, and uh, he, he never did worry about it. He said, none of these things are going to move me. I want to talk about that a little bit tonight, and I want to just read you off a little quick outline. It'll not be long, so you listen carefully. Number one, I want to say people could not move him. People could not move him. If you're not careful in your Christian life, people will move you. 
Uh, listen to people. People will get you all tore up. People will have you tore all to pieces if you're not real careful. I, I know people that done real good, stood for the Lord, and the next thing you know, they started talking to so-and-so. And then they started talking to so-and-so. And they started listening to this person and started listening to that person. Next thing you know, they were moved. They wouldn't move. Uh, people could not move him. They could not disturb him. In Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13, uh, they couldn't bring up his past. They tried to bring up his past. You know what they done? They come to old Paul and they said, uh, oh, you, you claim to be a preacher? Uh, well, you used to have people thrown in jail. You used to do this. You did that. You did this. You did the other. You did the other. And they threw up his past in his face. You know what Paul said? I'm not letting that move me. You know what he told them? He said, forgetting those things which are past, I reach forward to the prize for the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now I'm going to tell you something tonight. Anybody who's always around you throwing up your past in your face is not your friend and they are not led by the Lord. They're led by the devil. As a matter of fact, anybody who's always saying, well, you used to do this, you used to do that, you used to do that, you have perfect liberty to just turn around and walk away from some idiot like that because they are, don't have your best interest at heart. I don't have the right to bring up your past. If God's forgive you and it's under the blood and God don't mention it, it ain't none of nobody else's business either. Amen. Now you put that in your little religious self-righteous pharisaicals pot and smoke it. Uh, but I'm telling you tonight, old Paul said, it's not going to move me. It's not going to move me. They said, you used to be a blasphemer. He said, you got it right. Used to be. He said, uh, you had people putting bread. You got it right. Had. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. My sins are gone. You can't. It's under the blood. And I'm going to tell you tonight, anything you've confessed that is under the blood is gone. And don't you let nobody throw it up in your face. Uh, so people could not move him. They could not disappoint him. You know why? Because his faith wasn't putting people anyway. I had somebody call me one time. They said, oh, Brother Danny, did you hear about so-and-so? And I said, uh, no, I didn't. And they proceeded to tell me. Uh, some preacher got caught stealing money and had to go to prison. In Georgia. And, it, that, you know, they said, well, what are you going to do about that? And I said, I ain't going to do nothing about it. I remember, I remember when... Uh, uh, all that Jim Baker scandal and that thing broke out in the late 80s and during that time I was picking mom up for church and uh, uh, it was on a Sunday morning and I went over to mom's house and I walked in the door and she said, Danny, did you hear about so and so and Jim Baker and Jimmy Swagger and all that? And I said, uh, yeah, I heard about it. She said, well, son, isn't that the office thing? I said, yeah. She said, well, what are you going to do? I said, I don't know what other people are going to do, but I'm going to church this morning and preach just like I always have. And you know why? Because Jim Baker didn't die for my sins, and Jim Baker ain't going to judge me one day, and Jim Baker ain't my Savior, and Jimmy Swaggart wasn't either. I'd be in bad shape if either one of them was my Savior. Uh, but the Lord's my Savior. My job's to keep my eyes on Jesus Christ, not on some preacher. Any preacher will disappoint you sooner or later, and any person will let you down sometime, somehow, some way. Paul said, I'm not going to let people disappoint me. Keep your eyes on the Lord. And he said, I'm not going to let them discourage me. Amen. I, uh, this, this old guy used to call me. I've met people like that down through the years. And there are certain people that I've met in my ministry that, honest to goodness, I get to where I dread to see them coming. It's, it's always something negative, something bad. And it's like when they hear something bad, they can't wait to tell me. And I don't want to hear it. And this old boy, he used to call me once in a while. And he'd call me on Saturday night. I believe the devil led him to do that. And uh, he'd call me on Saturday night. He'd say, Brother Danny, are, are you all right? I'd say, well, I reckon. He said, are you getting along okay? I said, as far as I know. And he'd wait and he said, well, I just want to tell you I still love you. I said, uh, yeah, 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 is there something I need to know? I don't care what they're saying about you, preacher. I still love you. I want to say, will you drop dead? I mean, here I am trying to study on Saturday night, get full of the Holy Ghost to go out and preach on Sunday morning, and some nut calling me to plant 
crazy thoughts in my head and making me think the whole world's uh, turned again. Listen, I, he didn't let people disappoint me. You know what Paul said? Paul said, I know who I met on the road to Damascus that night, uh, that day. I know who appeared to me brighter than the light of the sun. I know who commissioned me and changed my life. It ain't no matter what you people say. I tell you what I've had to do down through the years. I've had to make up my mind. It does not matter if people like it, we go. If they don't like it, we go. If people say amen, I preach. If people say get mad and cuss, I preach. If people get up and walk out, I preach. And if they shout and fall and all and pray, I preach. I'm not preaching for them no how. I'm preaching for the Lord. I had a guy one time, I'm not too far from here, down in Morton, and I was preaching revival. And I got off, back then I, I had a really hard bone to pick with the Beatles. I was mad at them because I believed they ruined the world. And I do believe this is one of the major, devil's major tools. I still believe that. And I said something about the Beatles, what nothing but an old bunch of mop-headed, dope fornicators. And, I, and this guy, this guy got up back here, about halfway back, and walked, he went like that. He went, Pfft. Like that, and just walked out the door. Uh, you know what? And I thought, well, Lord, have mercy, good night. Uh, uh, I, I thought, well, if I'd have been preaching for people, I'd have just, I'd have just stuck my lip out about that far and went home and said, I, I quit, I quit. Did you see what they've done to me, Lord? He went like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor little fame, bless its little heart. Uh, somebody went like that, and you, I know, I know somebody went visiting on visitation one time, and somebody slammed the door in the face, and they said, "I'm never going to do that again." Uh, that's how big babies we have in churches tonight. We have such big babies. I, I hate to see what's going to happen. If Real persecution really does come one of these days. And we're getting a little bit of it right now, but nothing like people in other countries have had for years and what we may wind up seeing before this thing's over with. But old Paul did not let people move him. Number two, he didn't let persecution move him. Now, the reason for persecution is to see if you'll obey God. The results of persecution, you are made strong. The reward of persecution you get a crown of righteousness. When they talked about him like he was a dog. They lied about him. They lied. And, and let me tell you something. If you've never had people telling lies about you and talking bad about you for the Lord, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't very far along in your Christian life. Uh, get used to it. Get used to it. I mean, I, I know people. I know people that if they find out somebody told something, about them, they'll they'll go over at their house and say, "I just want you to know uh, that, that." Listen, I quit that a long time ago. If I spent my time chasing down every lie that was ever told about me, that's all I'd ever get done. And uh, you know, um, I, I asked old Fred Potter one time. I heard Fred Potter say he said he had these bunch of deacons that was giving him a fit. And he had some deacons. He wanted to build a children's home or something. They didn't like it, and they fussed and argued, and they disagreed and everything. And I saw him. I saw him uh, uh, 20 years after that. I said, Preacher Potter, what'd you ever do about them old deacons that was giving you trouble? He said, I outlived them. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's a good answer right there. And I thought, you know what? Uh, you know what my philosophy is? Uh, if I'm if I'm here and I'm running my race, right? I'm running my race for the Lord. Uh, here I am, Brother Danny. I go to church. I witness. I give out tracts. I visit. I pray. I give out more tracts. I visit. I pray. I step in the paint. I come back up the. Uh, I come there this way. I visit. I'm going for the Lord. I'm going for the Lord. And then I got these little preachers over here. They remind me of a little them little Chihuahua dogs coming out. Barking at me. That's what they remind me of. I, I down the road from, from where I live, a little chihuahua comes running out, and you'd think he's going to tear your leg off. That little old thing comes running up there where, where Chubby and them lives, you know where the, uh, and he comes running up through there, and he goes, and I just keep a running. I just keep a running. And once in a while, I think, I'm just going to play a little joke on him. And I'm running and I can feel him. They get almost at your feet. And I turn around and go, bah! And he goes, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> takes off back down to his house like a scalded dog. I'm, I'm telling you, you know what? That's, that's what you call backbiting. You ever wonder why they call it backbiting? Because they won't say it to your face, that's why. Amen? 
preach, preacher. Uh, listen, uh, and backbiting preachers, and you probably got people that you know that backbite because they ain't got enough guts to talk to you to your face, but it's always behind your back. You know what I do? I just outrun them. I heard preachers say something about me, and I'll just run in my race and stay busy and run in my race and stay busy. And I turn around and say, what did you say? I said, well, hey, Brother Danny, how are you? Sure is good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Or Chihuahua. Reverend Chihuahua, brother. I, that's what they are. I'm telling you, persecution didn't bother him. I have not got time to stop and argue. I'm not. And let me say this for all the preachers that will hear this on the Internet. For heaven's sake, quit using all your time playing on your phone, answering every critic, answering and arguing and fussing about every wind of doctrine. And but for, Why don't you get busy and try to win some drunk or some drug addict or some little boy or girl to the Lord? Ask, ask her, brother. I don't spend my time arguing on the phone. I don't spend my time arguing. Uh, Debating back and forth. If some of you people's half as smart as you think you are, uh, you'd be uh, you'd be a, a genius in a college anyway. Listen, listen. Don't spend your time fussing and bickering back and forth on those books. For God's sake, do something for God. Why you got to change and let the world know you stand for the Lord? Don't use your time arguing with each other. We don't do something like that for. Amen. I'll, I'll smack it going down the road, but I'm not going to spend my time arguing. I can spend this whole sermon up here fussing because they won't let us come to church. What good would that do? And, and I can have a good argument. I do have a good argument. Uh, Carrie went to Walmart yesterday or the day before. She said, how many of you let in here? I think they said 850. 850! You think that don't make a preacher mad? You think that don't make a preacher mad and they're this close, passing each other, going this way, going this way, going this way, handling that filthy lucre and all that, and we're not allowed to have but 10 in a room that seats 500 by law? Hey, man, hey, hey, I could fuss all day about that, but I've got something better to do. Preach the Bible. Preach the gospel. Help. We had people get saved. We had a girl get saved this morning. I didn't even tell y'all. Little girl got saved out here. I think Kelly got the leader of the Lord in the parking lot. Woo! If I'd have spent my whole time fussing about the political issues of the coronavirus, that would have never happened. Now, I'll slap it. I'll smack it and give my opinion. But I'm telling you, I'm not going to waste my ministry arguing with people over political issues or the coronavirus issue and when, I, when the world going to hell. Smack it, but I ain't going to spend my, my whole life on it. Amen. I'll smack it a little bit. I'll tell you something I heard this week. Did you know, have y'all heard that San Francisco, uh, the, the officials in San Francisco are spending millions of dollars. They got all the homeless people off of the streets and put them in motels and are paying their motel bills so they're living in motels with, and getting free drugs and free alcohol and free cigarettes. And the reason they say they're doing that is because they don't want them spreading the coronavirus. Now, I'm all for helping homeless people. There's a lot of people out there that's homeless probably that, that's, that's legitimately homeless and had bad luck stuff. God knows we ought to help them, help them find them a place to stay. But you are not helping people by furnishing them a nice motel and giving them liquor and drugs. You are enabling them uh, to sin more and more and more. And I'm telling you, they're letting criminals out of jail because they don't want to spread the coronavirus, then locking up business people and preachers and threatening. I know preachers that have been threatened to be locked up. This is crazy. Paul did get locked up. He did get thrown in jail for preaching the gospel, but it didn't move him. Persecution didn't move him. Then he said this. He said uh, problems couldn't move him. People ask me all the time, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? I said, uh, well, I'll tell you what I think about North Carolina. 
I think we need to pray for our governor that the Lord will open his eyes. And I think we ought to, it's, it's just what I think. I think you ought to take uh, from Winston-Salem down that way east, cut it off right there, take from Winston-Salem this way, and let them join up with Virginia. That half of North Carolina, because they're all like, they, they believe the same. Them join up with Virginia, and us join up with Tennessee. Or South Carolina is one, well, half and half, except for Ash Frisco over there. Uh, uh, let, just cut them out a little hole. Let them do whatever they want to. Uh, and I know somebody get mad about that. That shows how much sense you got and how much respect you got for what God said in the Bible. You don't have a lot of respect for what's right. You're a, you're a world pleaser. You're a compromiser. I'm telling you, brother, this book said Paul preached to him, and those problems didn't move him. Didn't move him. And that hard preaching bothers some people. Separation. Sufferings. He suffered his thorn in the flesh. Uh, I ain't got time to get off on all that, but the Bible said it was a messenger of Satan. And the Bible said it was a temptation. It was not bad eyesight, as all the, the religious books and seminarians and the preachers on TV preach. How bad eyesight is a messenger of Satan and a temptation, I have no idea. But that's what it was. And Paul, God left that in Paul to show him, my grace is sufficient for you, Paul. Paul said, Lord, if I could just get rid of this, if I didn't have this one thing, God, I could do great mighty things. I could do great mighty things. The Lord said, I ain't doing it. I'm leaving it in you. And he didn't let it move him. Persecution couldn't move him. Problems couldn't move him. And then finally, and I'm through, powers couldn't move him. Powers couldn't move him. You don't, now, there's three, two kinds of powers. There's sinful power, and then there was satanic power. Sinful power couldn't move him. The world, the flesh, the devil. Don't you think that, uh, don't you think the devil throwed every temptation in the book at Paul? I guarantee you. Uh, I, I guarantee you the apostle Paul was tempted. He was tempted. Sometimes we try to elevate people like that to sainthood and we say, oh, the apostle Paul, he just walked on water and never thought of no, no, no. He said, oh, wretched man that I am. He said, the good that I want to do, I don't do. That what I don't want to do, I wind up doing. I'm a low down good for nothing dog. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Listen, Paul had temptation. Paul had sinful powers work on him. But they couldn't move him. Paul had sinful power. Can I say something to y'all? here tonight? Can I say something to all you people at home? Can I say something to all you people that are in different parts of the world? The devil's going to throw everything at you but the kitchen sink. He's going to fuss. He's going to raise Cain. He's going to try his best. And especially now when you don't have that close Christian fellowship, when you're not around your brothers and sisters in Christ, when you're staying at home night after night, all you got is that remote control or that phone. All that The devil is going to tempt you. You make up your mind, I'm going to be like Paul. I'm not going to let it move me. I'm not going to give in. I shall not be. I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. I'll not watch that dirty video. I'll not watch that movie that's wicked. I'll not have that kind of talk in my house. By the grace of God, I'm not going to let sinful power move me. Then there's satanic power. Demonic forces and power. Listen to me. Listen to me carefully. You've got to watch out, especially since you, while you're spending a lot of time at home. Ladies, and all, if you're out of work or whatever, there's, the devil will start talking to you. He'll start putting stuff in your head. I know people that this has already happened to in the last two months. I've talked to people. And you sit at home. One, one, somebody told me the other day, they said, Lord, I think I'm going crazy. I think this, I think that, what if this, what if that, what's going to happen, what's right, what's true, I don't even know what I believe, all that. Satanic powers! Satanic power! I, not trying to sound spiritual tonight, but I have experienced, I'm sure, spiritual attacks from evil spirits and satanic power. I, I can tell you story after story after story. Carrie over there, she could verify some of these. I've always preached and believed that the devil makes things go backwards. I've always believed that. 
I, I believe that 30 years ago I was preaching. I never heard nobody say it. But it's like God said don't eat the fruit. The devil says eat the fruit. God says uh, husbands love your wife. The devil says no, don't. Go with somebody else. God says children obey your parents. The devil says you don't have to do nothing they say. It's just opposite of whatever God says. The devil makes things go backwards. You remember in the old scary movies when the demon spirit would come in, the, the clock on the wall would start going backwards. And they said that, uh, or it would stop. They said that's what happened when Charles Manson walked in the courtroom out in California. Clock would stop or start going backwards. They said that same thing happened in, a, in the presence of a UFO. And I'm talking people all over the world that have never met each other tell the same story. My watch stopped. I knew of a girl. I didn't ever meet her, but I heard a testimony that called Dr. Jack Hudson from Northside Baptist Church in Charlotte. I think you can still hear this testimony online somewhere. This girl called him from somewhere out in Mississippi or somewhere way out there, Arkansas somewhere. I can't remember where it was. And Dr. Hudson said, he said she talked to him on the phone. She said, is this a preacher that's preaching on satanic spirits and wicked spirits? He said, yes, it is. And she, she began to talk to him about being possessed of the devil. And he said he didn't realize it. When he got off the phone, his watch had stopped the whole time he was talking to her. He said she called back two or three times. If she called back one day and talked ten minutes, his watch would lose ten minutes. Oh, you say, Brother Daniel. Now, wait a minute. Before, before you spout off about something you don't know what you're talking about, I'm telling you there are testimonies from all around the world of people who never met each other who say the very same thing. There's some kind of electricity, principalities, and power in there that has an effect on cars, on car engines and motors, and on electrical stuff that makes it short. Lights go off and on. You've, I've, you've heard me tell it before. The lights went out so many times I couldn't even tell you. I was preaching in a little church up in the mountains one night. And I got on something real hot and heavy, and the power of God was all over that place. And they had a little bitty church, and they had a ceiling fan right on top of my head. And that was just going like that. I guess they wanted some air to circulate up here because, you know, it gets hot up here. And uh, all of a sudden, that fan just stopped and started spinning the other way. Sure did. My hand to God that happened. And a strange smell come out in the room. And I was, well, I didn't pay much attention to it now. Now, anybody that knows anything about electrical, there is no way in the world that fan could have stopped and started going the other way unless the switch was switched that reverses it. How those wires come unplugged and then hooked back the other way, nobody knew. And when I got done, the preacher stood up in the pulpit. He said, folks, I don't know what's going on here tonight. How many of y'all seen that ceiling fan? Start going, and people started raising their hand right there. I started thinking, well, I don't know about this place, man. I'm I'm getting out of town. <laughs> I'm ready to leave. It was feeling strange. And that smell, it's always that smell like rotten eggs, like sulfur, brimstone. And you hear stuff over and over. And I'm not trying to seem weird here tonight, but if you think there's not satanic powers working against the church and against the Bible and against me and against you, you you're, you've got your head stuck in the sand, people. There's powers, active, working spirits. I was preaching one time. I used to preach at the flea market every Saturday. And I was preaching one time on top of my van, just like I did out here on Sunday morning. That's why it's so easy for me out there. It just, I love it. It reminds me of old time. That's how I started out preaching, and it may be how I wound up. And uh, if that's what God wants, that's fine. And I used to do that every week at the flea market, me and these boys. And I'd stand out there and preach on it. And I got down one time, there's an old man come over. He said, young man, if you could see all the demon spirits around here trying to get at you on that van, you'd take off running. I said, really? And I could just see big old monsters with their tongues coming out at me and stuff. I thought, good night. And then I, then I thought, but if you could see, the Bible said the angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him. 
and that's the angels. I pray every service right out there in my car before I come in here. I pray before I get down here, God, push them back, push them back. There's demonic spirits trying to keep you from listening. There's demonic spirits trying to get you to doubt the Bible. There's demonic spirits trying to get you to hate your husband or to hate your wife. Or not. And brother, listen, you tell the angel of the Lord, push them back. Don't let powers move you. If all of a sudden you get some weird thought and it says, how do you even know the Bible's true? You know good and well right then, some, something's messing with you. Something messing with you. You know the Bible's true. Right then you get down and you say, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over my mind, my soul, my body. I rebuke you, Satan, in Jesus' name. The Lord rebuke thee and plead the blood and don't let power said, I ain't going to do it. Now, I'm going to stop right there tonight. I don't know where you stand tonight. My strong advice to you would be, I shall not be moved. Let's stand by our heads in prayer. Our heads are bowed, our eyes closed. You at home, bow your head please, close your eyes while we, while we pray just a moment tonight. heads are bowed, our eyes are closed, nobody's talking, she's playing softly tonight, I don't doubt a bit, somebody, somebody at home, somebody up north, somebody out west, somebody in Australia, somebody in England, somebody in Africa, desperately needed this message tonight, and I want to ask you right now, will you plead the blood and just say, Lord, by your grace, I shall not be moved. She's playing softly tonight. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I sure do thank you. I sure do thank you for the opportunity we have to come to you in prayer. We ask you, Lord, that you'd forgive us of all of our sins, everything we've said, everything we've done, wrong or sinful. God, forgive us. Have mercy on us, O oh Lord. I pray you'd keep that protective bubble over our family and over our church family. Please, please, Lord. We don't deserve it, but I beg you for it. I pray, God, have mercy upon us, oh, Lord. Have mercy upon us, oh, God. Bless us through these dark times and difficult days. Bless all of our folks at home. Bless those that are having problems. Bless the elderly especially and those that are having sickness and problems and burdens. Pray and bless every preacher. God, we've got to make so many decisions. Help us to be led by your spirit. Lord, we know that every preacher has got to follow you and do what he thinks is right. I pray, God, that your will will be done in our life. We love you. Praise your holy name. Bless now as we go. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen and amen and amen. Amen.